Hello and welcome to Nub TV, the craziest show anywhere in the world. It's about the paranormal, UFOs, sceptical approach sometimes, and we've got the best new music. Pretty cool. Today's episode is called The Mental Internet. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be speaking with a Norwegian author called Taj Simonsen. Excuse me, Taj, if I got your name wrong. Pronunciation. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's a cool interview. I think it's going to blow a few people's minds, uh, and it might, because last week was a bit kind of sceptical, which is cool. Yeah. And uh, this is why I'm wearing this this uh, hoodie because I I want to believe, but uh, the rational in me has to say, well, you know, you have to balance it, don't you? Mm. If you believed everything, no, you'd be Matt Letizia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't sue us. <laughs> He's a Southampton fan, so it's I okay. love Matt. Okay, yeah. yeah, he can do no wrong. In my eyes. <laughs> okay, so what have we got first on the show tonight? So first on the show, we've got Temporary Hero. Oh, okay, cool. And it's a really, really interesting video. It is, isn't it? It's very, yeah. very simple but very effective. Check it out. Uh, probably the artiest video we've had on the series, I reckon. Yeah, so it's called Don't Make Me Forget, mm. which I didn't mention earlier. Okay. But yeah, lovely song. Yeah, very soulful, but then the video's like, it's like uh, modern art, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I really like it. But uh, American band, so there you go. Oh, okay. Mm. So next I'm going to be talking with Norwegian author Taraj Simonsen about the mental internet. We wanted to interview you about your fabulous uh, new book, which I've got here. Uh, Thank you. I mean, it's 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 so in depth and uh, it, it's brilliant. I mean, uh, it's everything that anyone who's into the paranormal needs on this subject, really. It's all in here. Thank uh, you. And I think especially relevant to the future of the paranormal and where we go from here because there's a lot of developments with consciousness mm. and I know you tie into that quite a lot can you just give our viewers just a brief outline uh mm. that book please uh about the book yes uh, uh well uh, my my background then uh, is relevant probably because from uh trusted friends and family i heard stories you know that there were no say uh apparent explanation for and uh, i could not uh I could not dismiss the stories. Uh, I'll give you an example. My 
grandfather, he was a machine engineer and a very rational man and had never set foot uh, in a church or uh, in a kind of new age connection or yeah. whatever, you know. Uh, but still, he was able to hear my grandmother uh, uh, about half an hour before she uh, was coming home oh, wow. and and uh, that was just not just a single event it was a, a very regular so oh. he started to make uh, dinner for her because uh, <laughs> when he, he heard that kind of uh, uh, auditive uh, hallucination or what we should call it so uh, that was kind of a regular experience and uh, also um, the other example, uh, for instance, my, my cousin was in another town uh, from my hometown and mm -hmm. my aunt had been sleeping after dinner, you know, mm -hmm. and my cousin had a rather special encounter in this other uh, town, our uh, capital, uh, Oslo, yeah. and a very special involving specific persons, you know, in specific clothing and all that. Mm -hmm. And she afterwards, she called home to her mother, my aunt, uh, to tell what she had experienced. And uh, my aunt immediately I know because I was dreaming and I dreamt exactly the same what you experienced. Wow. That's, yeah. yeah. And also, for instance, uh, my aunt, the same aunt and uh, her husband, uh, they were in bed and he had fallen asleep. And she was reading some kind of Swedish uh, old history from the ancient Egypt, you know. And there yeah. was a, a picture of some high, uh, hieroglyphs and all that stuff. And uh, beneath the hieroglyphs, there were a text and she was reading that text. And and. As she was reading this text, uh, she heard um, her husband, my uncle, start um, speaking in his sleep. And what he was saying was the exact same words that she was reading, you know. <laughs> so, how should we explain that? Mm, yeah, how do we? I mean, I know you've had, used the term a mental internet. Exactly. So, if uh, it's much more... Um, uh, from the normal, say, psychological perspective, if you go to the university and take, a, say, a crash course of psychology 01 or what they call it, um, then you will learn that consciousness is something that is inside your head or inside other people's head. Uh, but the mental internet model of consciousness, which I uh, uh, adhere to in my book, is uh, rather that it's a collective uh, field, a sphere of information in which we participate, uh, just like the internet. And then these phenomena are much more easy to explain because then telepathy, that would be like sending emails in a way uh, and also clairvoyance would be downloading of information uh, and somehow if we uh, perceive consciousness as this collective field of information we are all sharing we are all uploading information on that all the time and for those uh, who are sensitive clairvoyant perignosts psychics uh, whatever we should call them uh, they are able to download this information but it is there all the time therefore also this um, view of consciousness uh, is somehow uh, also a very democratic view of these paranormal abilities because of course the mystics having spent perhaps 20 years in meditation are more likely to perceive those small vibes you know but they are there for every uh, one of us to experience in uh, according to talent and training so do you think it's an in inherent instinctive part yes. that we somehow we've lost touch with most yes people Yes, okay. yes. And and uh, we get uh, connected with it usually in crisis, for instance, if a relative uh, suffers um, uh, shock, in injury, death or something like that. There's very many reports about that. And also, if you are deep in sleep, for instance, or deep in meditation, or use hallucinogenics, or in trance, or even brain damage. Because if you think of uh, this, um, mm -hmm. uh, in this view of consciousness, um, it's not created by by the brain it's uh, rather filtered and reduced by the brain yeah. uh, giving us a sorted somehow uh, matrix uh, that we can relate to so if you for instance suspend that filtering that firewall to use the internet language then all the information can came through and that can also happen if you have uh, brain damage uh, that is uh, several reports about i mentioned it also in my book so so you have to somehow suspend the filtering and then the the information is all there for you to experience. Okay, so there you go. Ooh.
So basically what he's saying is like consciousness is not part of the brain. It's out there on a cloud, on a server. That's why he calls it the mental internet. That's yeah. just a bit mind blowing, isn't it really? It is, yeah. Uh, and it, you know, and the brain, our brain is a bit like a firewall. Yeah. And people with telepathy is by sending emails using telepathy, you know. So is that like, you know, when the phone rings and you go, I know that that's like my mate Dave. You go, all right, Dave, and it's them. You know sometimes, yeah, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. You kind of got the intuition that, yeah, that's it, yeah. And, you know, his basic argument is that it's a natural instinct, uh, survival instinct, but, you know, because of our conditioning and evolution, most people don't have it. And yeah. the people that do have it are the psychic ones, you know, people like Uri Geller and people like him. Oh, okay. can tap into it. But the good news is, well, I won't spoil the second half of Ooh. the interview, but there is, there is good news. It's not just people like Uri and, you know, other mind, mind people. We can all have a little bit of it, I reckon. Yes. Yes. That be uh, coming up next. Hello and welcome back to Nub TV. I'm going to be talking more with Norwegian author Tarsh Simonsen about the mental internet. Well, my next question is, okay, so it seems to be this mental internet, this non-local consciousness is yes. a democracy in terms of anyone can access it. Yes. Would governments around the world try to control it somehow? Is that possible? I don't think it's possible. Uh, luckily, it's not possible to control, I think. Um, but of course, you could, uh, could imagine that they uh, hired uh, 200 black magicians sitting there and meditating evil thoughts about the neighboring state or like that. Um, I write in my book quite, uh, I have one chapter about the military use of those yeah. abilities and um, in um, what they called uh, uh, this East-West conflict between mostly between the USA and uh, and uh, Soviet Union, uh, they were quite um, interested in using these for spy purposes, yeah. uh, espionage, yeah. and they have some uh, kind of great success with it also, uh, at least in singular cases. Yeah. Uh, what uh, made uh, the say the government at least in, in the USA somehow uh, put these uh, projects on the shelf uh, was that it um, was somehow uh, difficult to make um, the predictions and the uh, visions the clairvoyance uh, relay uh, reliable enough yeah. to 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 base military operations because if you have lots of forces you have hundred thousand uh, troops you have equipment you have lots of civilians to make all this depend on the sometimes precise, sometimes flimsy visions of a clairvoyant, you know, it's 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 uh, too risky in a way. So, um, but uh, all the researchers involved in this project uh, in the US, uh, it's called Project Stargate um, as an umbrella term, uh, they uh, were totally convinced about the reality of the phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So uh, the problem was not that uh, do these things exist or not? But uh, rather, are they reliable enough to be used in normal military activity? And the answer to the first question, uh, do these things exist, was a clear yes. And the <laughs> answer to the other question was no. Uh, because it was not a researcher's uh, say, n uh, task to decide the future of these uh, projects. It was uh, a kind of... Uh, governmental body that was somehow uh, uh, evaluating and they found that uh, okay interesting but we cannot say base our military operations on this stuff so might be interesting but uh, for the time being let's close it down and that happened in 1995 and then the program had been running for about 20 years yeah oh, okay thanks for that the other question i've got which is which is a bit out there is that Okay, you know, this mental internet, this non-local consciousness exists. Would we be sharing that with possibly alien entities? Yes, I think so. Because uh, at least at my perception, this is kind of 
the basic stuff of the universe, this consciousness. And that is in, in somehow in step with this old Indian Vedanta philosophy that somehow consciousness is on a higher level than uh, uh, matter. Uh, in our normal, say, enlightenment philosophy after uh, René Descartes and uh, that kind of branch yeah. of philosophy, we tend to to to, to regard matter as, uh, say, the, um, the primary principle. But uh, as I say, the old Indian uh, and also the old Buddhist tradition tend to, to, to have the opposite uh, hierarchy. Uh, so there you can somehow uh, regard uh, consciousness is, uh, say, the basic stuff of the universe. And then somehow, just like uh, ice is frozen water, water on a lower energetic uh, level. So yeah. you can also regard from that perspective matter as a somehow frozen consciousness, yeah. uh, frozenness that has taken somehow uh, a concrete shape. Uh, and is on energetically speaking a, a lower level and there are some quantum physicists somehow mm -hmm. that shares that kind of uh, uh, philosophy about the universe uh, very famous hungarian american uh, evgen uh, wigner uh, he is uh, excellent and and uh, he more and more this older he be, be became he became more and more convinced about that and also you have in england in uh, cambridge uh, mm -hmm. professor brian josephson uh, who uh, won the nobel prize in physics in 1973 uh, he is convinced about some kind of consciousness collective you know uh, ever present and why should the aliens be somehow <laughs> it's it's part of the cosmos absolutely yeah i quite agree so i guess the big question is what happens to our consciousness when we die is it's just because it's not in us it's already mm. out there yeah, yeah 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 does that carry on after our death as they say in this old hermetic saying, it cannot die because it has never been born. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> okay, so that, I found that quite enlightening. Yeah. Because it's yeah. suggesting that this is a dem democratic thing. It's not like just for the chosen special few mm. that have these powers. We can all access it. We can all access the, this mental internet. We can train ourselves through meditation and whatever to be able to access this this power, you know. Oh, okay. So meditation, kind yeah, of deeper quieting levels of the consciousness. Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can okay. get in touch with that natural instinct that we've got. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we can use this to make our lives better, other people's lives better. Yeah. But I mean, my worry is, like I said to him, is like, you know, can the government or you know, big corporate organizers, can mm. they con try and control it? Wow. Well, they thereby control people's minds. I've heard that, um, you yeah. know, that um, that sweetener drug, aspartame? Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that's in all your Cokes and yeah, yeah. Diet Cokes. Um, that it's been used as a co because it's so across everything. Yeah. Like the government used it as a tool to deaden a like, uh, connection to you know the spiritual world or or wow. this external internet because obviously they don't want people connecting too much so they it would be uncontrollable wow so wh where did you hear this on on, on, <laughs> on twitter was it <laughs> tiktok <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah, know okay. it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't surprise me no i mean i guess if we go down the conspiracy road which some people do then you could think maybe people in the government because the especially the u.s government has tested and used uh psychic mm. soldiers you know even people like uri geller we've had on the show he was tested by the cia found to have psychic powers they wanted to use him and other people like him to be able to take on the russians in the cold war and the yeah. russians were doing the same so they're no strangers to this you know psychokinetic power so yeah it makes sense that they will want to kind does. of keep it in the hands of you know, people they can train, as opposed to letting it loose on the on the yeah. public. But imagine if, you know, you could use it as a real force for good, couldn't you? Mm. I think it's always... Oh, yeah. The force, like Star Wars, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It could all be Jedi Knights. <laughs> I mean, it, this is all... Uh, this is all our theories. <laughs> <laughs> Had a disclaimer. <laughs> Uh, yeah but okay interesting things anyway really interesting and, yeah uh, i like that so yeah keep on watching tiktok people and love tv yeah of course
So what have we got next? What have we got next? Uh, we, oh, right, yeah, we've Ooh. got a, a, a bit of a like, scary video, actually. Ooh. This is Ethmo. Oh. And there's no way I'm going <laughs> to... Foy... I've got it written down here. Foyer... Foyer Strunken? Foyer Strunken! Oh! <laughs> this is Deutsche. Ah! Yeah. This is Foyer Strunken by This Is Ethmo. Para mi mamita que me quita mi bombón. Yeah, I recognise that melody is actually Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Ah. The melody Ode to Joy comes from. Da, 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 da. Uh, I knew I'd kind it's for, of... It's for all the Brexit fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all seven <laughs> of them now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like that. It's a really good track and a like, nice, like, chunky beats in there mixed with a bit of classical. And, and... a bit of beatbox. Yeah. What's that, what happened to beatboxing? Let us know on the TV. If there's any beatboxers out there, any paranormal beatboxers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got, yeah. it's got to be someone. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going to get my guitar. Yes. This is the mental internet. This is the best one yet. Here on Up TV, the place to be. Thank you for watching. Watch it go by. There is a light up in the sky. We sit and watch it go by.